But now the challenge becomes how do you use this cheap and potentially clean power um, and actually, yeah, okay, I'll try this again. Um, Hi everyone, I'm Christian Caps. Most people just call me Caps, and I'm an assistant professor in the Technology and Operations Management Unit at Harvard Business School. My research interest is really looking at the energy transition, sort of big picture question, how do we get greener power to more people on the planet? And I look at three different things, technology, for example, all that battery storage, how does human behavior change here as technology in the energy space becomes more decentral? And then what's the business model change as incumbents respond to technologies change? How do you have to operate your businesses differently and how do power markets change? What I thought was really interesting about energy is that it's a big culprit originally for climate change, but it also really has big opportunity and holds a huge promise because we have new technologies like solar, like wind, renewable power that can produce clean electricity. And actually solar, for example, has become the cheapest source of electricity generation in expectation. This in expectation is hiding that the sun doesn't always shine, the wind doesn't always blow. So what's the business now that you take those renewable technologies and actually create a new power grid, a new system of generating electricity from it? I think a lot of people, when they think about the energy transition, think about emissions and lowering them. And I think that's a, that's a huge piece what got me interested originally. But also it's a question of energy access to me. There are one and a half billion people without access to electricity grids on the planet. And those new technologies, solar and battery in particular, can start helping them to gain some of that access. I've written a case with a company called Hurtigruten. They are a Norwegian ferry operator. And what they are trying to figure out is, is it now the time to build an electric vehicle? Can you electrify this entire ship and the entire operations with it. What the students have to figure out in the classroom is, if you had a vessel like this, where would you even charge it? How do you get enough electricity into the batteries of that ship? But then also other questions of, is now the right timing for it? What is the cost carbon trade-off? And maybe how would customers react to it? Is there willingness to pay for it? I brought a, a book, it's called 8020 Triathlon, um, and it's a book on how to train in a, in a structured manner, having this idea of, I have three disciplines and I have a goal in mind in a year from now, how do you take that uh, ambition and break it down into like smaller chunks is something I really like, that kind of structured approach. On a personal note, one thing I, I really enjoy about triathlon, my favorite workout buddy is my wife, and so we go on a lot of long runs together, often on a weekend, run towards a diner, have a nice coffee, breakfast, and come back and often also just have friends tag along and you think you're actually training, but in reality you're having a lot of fun.